What's up guys, welcome back. I know it has been a long time since I have posted a video here on YouTube, but I am excited to be back and to be watching more volleyball video with you guys. Quick update, I arrived to my club team in Poland, Zaksa, about four days ago, and I am in full training mode and excited for the season to start on October 2nd. But I will be linking Zaksa's social, their website, down below so you guys can follow along and hopefully cheer us on along the way. All right guys, I feel like we should just jump into the video. Today I'm gonna to be answering your questions about the Olympics, about volleyball, about the village, about the athletes, pretty much about everything. I got a ton of questions on my Instagram about the Olympics. I went through them, there were a lot of repeat questions and I have pretty much dialed it down to 15, 20 questions. I'm not sure, some short, some long, everything about the Olympics, let's get into it. All right, first question. And I got this question a lot because I posted a lot of food TikToks <laughs> online. So people are asking what my favorite food was and to describe the food. So in the dining hall, which is huge, so many athletes, a lot of food, there's all different kinds of foods from pizza, pasta, burgers, vegetables, Mediterranean, gluten-free, vegan options. And then of course, there were the Asian options. And funny enough, those were always the longest lines. There was sushi, there was ramen, there was curry, there were dumplings, there were dim sum. And I would have to say that my two favorite things were the inari, it's like a type of sushi, and also the gyoza. The gyozos were bomb every day. They were perfectly cooked, fried, and I couldn't get enough of it. So I ate pretty much that every single day. So I would say gyoza and inari sushi. All right, did the restrictions for COVID outweigh the excitement or did it still feel like the Olympics? So yeah, there were a lot of restrictions, a lot of protocols. We had to test every day. We had to wear masks almost at all times. If you were outside of your room, you had to wash hands before the dining hall. You had to wear gloves. A little bit of an inconvenience, but honestly not that bad considering COVID and everything that's happening now, especially. So I wouldn't say it outweighed the experience. It was an amazing experience. Being at the Olympics is what we all strive to be at. And I don't think it took away from the excitement at all. This was like a pretty general question. How could we have performed better? Oh, let me get my list out. No, I think to be honest, we just didn't perform our best. I think it's funny when you talk about volleyball, you always talk about the serve and the pass game or the serve reception game and those were pretty much our downfalls, I think, of the tournament. There were a lot of complaints about the serving and the passing, and to be honest, I think those are the two things that we really could have done better. But a lot of things weren't clicking for us. Our opponents played absolutely amazing. They put us under a lot of pressure, under a lot of stress, and we just didn't play that well. So if I had to you know, boil it down to two things, it would probably be, be the serve game and the serve reception game. How did Tokyo compare to Rio? So completely different. Rio was like open and there were parties on the beach, not for us, of course, and you could go outside and no restrictions. And Tokyo was pretty much, we were in the village the entire time, couldn't go out, couldn't do anything. So completely different experiences. Also in Rio, we didn't stay in the village. We stayed in a hotel closer to the venue. And that was a whole new experience as well, just being in the village around the athletes and the dining hall and the energy and all those distractions. So night and day, both awesome though. All right, what was your favorite moment from the Olympics? Ooh, you know, it's hard because you have to separate the volleyball sometimes from the experience. I think my favorite part was just walking with my teammates to the dining hall every day. I, it was, ju there's just an energy in the village, you guys, that's really hard to describe and just seeing different athletes and what people were wearing and what they're eating. I think it's so cool to see the different countries, the different cultures, and what you can kind of learn from them, from them in that experience. All right, this was an interesting question that I got a lot. Which team surprised us? I don't know if anyone surprised us. We, we've played against these team, teams a lot and we know that they're really good. I think if there's one team that surprised the tournament, maybe it was Argentina. I don't know if they've medaled in a big time tournament in a really, really long time. And they played so well, so consistent, 
and I was so impressed with them and really happy that they won that bronze medal match and took the bronze medal. So if there was one team that surprised us, it was Argentina, but we, we, we've always had really good matches with them. <laughs> okay, this question came up a lot, literally two words. What happened? Um, a lot happened. I don't know how to answer that. Like I said before, we just didn't play our best. We didn't perform. The other teams played amazing and didn't allow us to play our game. So at the end of the day, you know, I'm really proud and happy of how we prepared, personally how I prepared for the tournament. It just didn't work out. There's not much else to say. All right, how do I think I played? Ooh, that's a tough question, you guys. It's always tough to evaluate your own play, but I think I would give myself, you know, a grade of maybe a B. Just average, B minus. I don't, I'm not sure. I think my defense was pretty good. My passing let me down a little bit. I think passing is one thing that I take a lot of pride in. I work on a lot. I feel like I'm pretty steady. And I just wasn't quite there for whatever reason, especially in that last match. It was just Argentina serving bombs. Didn't handle them very well and got a little frazzled. So Passing, not up to my standard whatsoever, and also setting, average. So I would just give myself an average grade for that one. But again, like I said earlier, I was really happy of, with how I prepared for the tournament. My preparation was awesome. I worked super hard. I worked on a lot of different things, got a lot of stuff done, just didn't translate to the game for whatever reason. All right, so these questions kind of go together. What did you do in your downtime, and were there opportunities to go sightseeing or to do anything outside of volleyball? We couldn't go sightseeing. You weren't allowed outside of the village unless you were going to your own event or possibly to another event, which was pretty hard to go to. We never saw any other sporting events. We couldn't even go to women's volleyball. So that was pretty difficult. So when we were stuck in the village, you know, we were watching video, we were doing scouting, we would play little games like cornhole or what's that game where you, you throw the rope and it tries to get a ladder ball, ladder ball? So little games trying to take up your time and you would explore a little bit, maybe in the village going to the dining hall or the rec hall where there are some games. So a lot of downtime and you just try to occupy it with games and socializing and watching other events on TV in the village. Okay, how did I deal with the Olympic outcome? Oof, tough question. You know, I was really, really upset. I was sad, I was disappointed. And I don't think there's anything wrong in taking time to be in your own space, take it all in and you know, be upset and be sad and be pissed off about what happened. I think it was probably one or two days of that emotion and then I was able to go home to Hawaii and be surrounded by friends and family who really love me and who I love you know, from the bottom of my heart. So you know, being surrounded with those people really helped, kind of just resting, recovering, eating good food, Going to the beach, being around good people really helped me kind of move past the tournament. And I'm still, I'm still in the middle of it, to be honest. So it's been a long recovery process, but I know that I'm moving in the right direction. Okay, so a lot of people asking about the scheduling during the Olympics. So if you guys didn't know, we play every other day. So let's just say Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's not how it went, but we're just doing that for example. And on those Tuesdays and Thursdays when you have off days, we were going to the USA High Performance Center, which was this off-campus training facility. Awesome job done by Team USA to get this set up where we were training, eating, lifting, watching video, and then we would go back to the village to kind of just rest, recover, and mentally get ready for the match the next day. So when we weren't playing matches, we were at this High Performance Center training and getting ready for the next match. Okay, what are the next steps to improve on USA Volleyball's game? That's a tough question because as you guys might know, in professional volleyball, we're not together as a team anymore. After the Olympics ended, we split up and now we're all with our teams overseas playing professional volleyball. So I'm in Poland, my brother is in Turkey, Micah Christensen is in Russia, Matt Anderson will go to Italy. So we're all split up. I think it's on us to work on our individual games keep getting stronger, mentally stronger, and just trying to improve or keep our game at a high level. And that's what playing professionally overseas does, does for us. We won't meet up again until April or May of 2022 to kind of regroup, get back together, and hopefully improve on our USA Volleyball game. All right, this is a good question. What was my experience 
with mental health at the Olympics. So to kind of put it in perspective, you guys, the Olympics is the biggest tournament of our sport, of volleyball. It can be extremely stressful. And especially with COVID when you're not allowed to go out or there was no fans, no family, no friends to kind of be there and talk with and support you, it was pretty tough. I felt, you know, under a pretty good amount of stress and just felt a lot of nerves and anxiety for the different matches. I think it's important for you as an individual to, you know, find your way of relieving that stress, whether it's talking to someone or playing a game or taking a walk or journaling to try to kind of relieve that stress. I know for me, it's always talking to a teammate or maybe a professional about what I'm feeling and going through. And that definitely helped me feel better throughout the tournament. Obviously things didn't work out very well, but I know that I took the right steps in order to feel better mentally throughout the Olympics. All right, I got this question a lot. What was my best memory of the Olympics? Ooh, that's a tough one. I mean, I think it was just the day-to-day -day, like life and atmosphere, like I said, of you know going with your teammates to the dining hall or going to play a game or being outside and meeting different athletes, which we didn't do a lot of because of COVID, but just being around that energy, I think was my best memory, my favorite thing to do and made the experience even better. Oh, this is a good question. How did Japan handle everything? Woo! You guys, Japan did amazing. They did an amazing job. First of all, the facilities were incredible. The arena was probably the nicest arena we've played in in a long, long time. But as far as protocols and organization and food and lodging, everything spot on, such an amazing job. Hats off to Japan for making this thing run in a crazy time as we all know so i couldn't thank them enough they did an amazing amazing job okay what did we do after losing and is there a time limit for staying in the village so yes there is a time limit i believe it's 48 hours so after you finish your competition you pretty much just got to get out of the village as fast as possible so all the athletes you saw in the closing ceremonies competed either that last day of the olympics or the day before so we had to get out pretty quick after we lost to argentina in that match we probably got home at 2 a.m because our match was at 10 45 got back at 2 a.m and then i had a flight later that day i believe at 7 p.m so it was a pretty quick turnaround it was meet in the locker room get back to the village organize all your stuff maybe walk around a little bit that day and then we were out of there super fast so super quick turnaround and we were out of there and I was home in Hawaii within 24 hours, I think. All right, what were the rooming situations? Yeah, so there are dorms, I think it's called dorms, in the village. And for our team of 12, we had two suites and the suites had six people in each. So my suite was me and Taylor, Micah Christensen and Garrett Moagatutia. Matt Anderson was alone because he was one of the older guys. And then Dave Smith was also alone because he was one of the older guys. So it's a room of six. Big suite, not that big, but four bedrooms in ours and two bathrooms. All right, got this question a ton. Was it strange to play without fans? Yes and no. I think during VNL we had no fans, but it wasn't like this huge arena. Most of us weren't playing with fans overseas. I was actually in Russia, so it was a little bit different, but to play in this like 12,000 seat arena without fans was a little bit strange. I think sometimes you get energy from the fans or sometimes the fans help you get out of your own head. If you're like struggling, sometimes they can cause you even more stress. So it was strange, but I don't know if it would have helped us or hurt us if there were more fans. I think if our family and friends were in the stands, that obviously would have helped. But overall, it's hard to tell, but it was definitely a little bit strange. All right, I got this question a couple of times. Do I slash the team get nervous before matches and how do we deal with those nerves? Yes, you guys, everyone gets nervous. I get nervous, Matt Anderson gets nervous, Micah gets nervous, everyone gets nervous. And if they don't say they're nervous, they're probably lying or they just don't care about the game, which isn't the case. So we all get nervous and it's very individual on how we deal with things. In the locker room, you can talk to someone, you can listen to music, you can dance, you can do more scouting. Whatever you wanna do, do it to try and relieve those nerves a little bit. Nerves aren't the problem. It's not an issue, everyone gets nervous. So don't feel weird if you do get nervous before matches because we all do. All right, what is my biggest takeaway from Tokyo? Oof. 
That is a tough one, you guys. Tokyo was a really strange experience just because of everything that was going on. A lot of volleyball things, a lot of off the court issues, COVID protocols, you name it, we went through it. So I think my biggest takeaway is control the controllables. In this day and age right now in the world, we can't control so much of what's going on, you know? So I think my biggest takeaway is to control the little things that we can control whether it's getting something off your chest with a teammate, or it's scouting more, or working even harder in the weight room, or getting more reps on the court. Those are the things that are gonna prepare you for the matches and for big moments like we were in. I think it's important for teams to all be on the same page. I don't think we were on the same page in Tokyo 2020, and that's on us because we didn't take care of business. We didn't have difficult conversations or speak to a teammate about different issues. And I think little things can turn big, especially in the Olympics. So my biggest takeaway, like I said, is to control those controllables, deal with all your stuff so you can have kind of that mental space to go into the matches. All right, something I learned in Tokyo that will help me moving forward. Ooh, that's kind of like a lesson or a takeaway, right? I think one is to prepare as best as I can. I think I did that. I think physically I felt great heading into the tournament. I think another thing I learned is to work on the mental aspect of my game even harder. I'm someone that has worked on it, has talked to a lot of people about the mental aspect of sports, but I think that I could dive a little bit more into that. So that's something I wanna do moving forward. And I think the last thing I learned from Tokyo is that as individuals, as players, and as a team, you really need to take care of the little things because in tournaments like the Olympics, little things can become bigger and can affect you on the court. So whether it's playing volleyball or off the court stuff, you really need to take care of those little things, talk about it, work through them, because if you don't, it can definitely affect your play on the court. And the last question, will you be trying for Paris 2024? And the short answer is yes. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I answered some of your questions about Tokyo 2020. This video was a long time coming, I know, but I'm so excited to be back on YouTube watching more volleyball with you. But as always, get out, play some volleyball, have some fun, and I hope to see you all soon. Peace.